Hi guys, I'm Mark Keene from Keen Engineering and I'm here with the guys from Mine Operator. I'll let you guys go and introduce yourselves. Hollywood. Ron. Harry. Gunman. And Chad's not here. Chad's not here. Chad's not here. <laughs> Chad's not here. <laughs> anyways, anyways, we're here to test our, our prototype Keen Engineering of the RC812 Crusher. Basically, it's kind of a prototype machine we've been working on on and off for the last 10 years, trying to get it right. And we're going to be testing the, um, I've got a, a 8 by 12 inch uh, jaw crusher, which then pulverizes everything down to about eighth of an inch particulate. And then we drop through the first set of rollers, which is a, uh, will take your eighth inch down to about 30 to 20 mesh, 30 to 50 mesh, somewhere in there. And then we go down through the second roller and the hill hopefully kicks it out about 80 to about 120 mesh, somewhere in that ballpark. But anyways, let's uh, put it to work and see how, how it does. The man eater. The man, the man, the man eater. eater, yes. <laughs> let's do it. Stand by, stand by. All ready? right, so we're getting ready to fire this thing up. These guys are just getting their act together. Ready? 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 Ready. Okay, clear. Right, so these guys are really organized. They have all their material bagged and tagged properly so they know where it's coming from. And you'll notice that the rocks we're crushing are really dense. This rock doesn't look like it, but it probably weighs 15, 20 pounds. It's full of agate, very dense, heavy material. It's a lot heavier than it looks like. I was kind of surprised when I picked it up. But we are running these bags through probably by the 30, 40 pound bag, maybe one or two bags per minute. So we're probably averaging around probably 60, 75 pounds a minute. So it's really rocking the material, no problem crushing it down. And you can see the machine's working good here. We're getting the materials crushed. The top jaw is crushing it down to about uh, maybe 16th to an eighth inch. Then the first roller takes it down to let's say 30 to, to 60 mesh. And the second roller takes it down to let's say you know 80 to 120 mesh but look how dense and heavy this rock you can see the agate layers i mean it is that believe it or not you're looking at about probably a 35 pound rock i couldn't believe how heavy these things were but i was really happy the machine just worked flawlessly the whole time we were there all right so far so good the machine's running like a champ look at the rock he picks up this thing has to weigh 35 45 pounds extremely dense full of agate, quartz, and other types of minerals, a lot of composite type minerals, and it is a heavy rock. Now what's interesting, we kept running, you know, different load ranges and different, uh, you know, quantities of material. No matter what we did, the machine never slowed down, it never stalled, it never even acted like it was under any kind of load, which, which I really appreciate. Uh, and I believe that we could easily just set up a big feed hopper, just load that hopper up to the top, and just walk away from the machine. It's going to eat up the, its material at its own pace, which is really nice about this crusher. Now, unfortunately, I'm not sure if we're ever going to really go into full production with this machine. Um, we've been working on it for a decade, but trying to build things in this Biden economy is just really tough. I don't know if I could afford to build them and make a buck on it. But anyways, um, we're still learning. We're still going forward. This is kind of my brother's and my personal rock crusher that we're going to maybe use on our, our own mining operation if, if and if and when we ever retire. But anyways, uh, we're having fun and I'm learning a lot this trip so far. So it's been really educational. I hope you guys can appreciate what we're, what we're all going through here. Well, as usual, I bring my two mascots. Now there's two, there's Newt and there's Teddy. So my dogs always come with us there. They go up to the Yuba River when we go up there. They always go out to the desert when we go up mining. They just love to get outdoors. So uh, it's always fun to bring them. And uh, they usually stay out of the way, not all the time. I like this. You 
guys are using your, your brains more than your brawn. A lot, lot, lot of people. None of us do. <laughs> bags are handy, huh? Right on the, the ones you get from like Home Depot or something, where you buy the gravel. Something like that, yeah. And they're just hanging a bag. Okay. Yeah, I've used it in the past for a few things, but this is a nice way you lift them around. Let me see what that material looks like. Oh, hell, that looks good. Look at that. That's not bad. I'm gonna have some oversized. It looks like sauna. Yeah, a little bit of oversized stuff, but if you look at this, like here's a yeah, little okay. little flat pieces, but watch this. They turn into powder. You know, what they are is they're like the compressed, it's like the compressed calcium or any moisture. Like a clay. Yeah, it turns into a clay, but it's all as soon as you get it wet, it all turns back into a slurry, which is nice. All right, so these guys are taking their, let's say it's a 250 to a 300 pound sample. They're loading it up onto a feed hopper, which then feeds that conveyor belt. All right, so you can see the material gets lifted up and it's dropped into the first conveyor belt. This conveyor belt drops it into that big beige hopper, and then that controls the feed up the main conveyor, which then drops it into the crusher. Now the crusher really isn't crushing. All it is is doing is they're adding water and liquefying the material so they can feed it onto the shaker right, table. See the this is that there. bottom of that gray hopper here. You can see that they have a small conveyor giving a nice controlled feed. That's kind of cool. And they That's have a little air vacuum system which just sucks up the, the dust so you don't dust out the whole shop. But people don't realize whenever you're feeding a shaker table or any kind of a separation device, a smooth, consistent feed is everything. You know, people don't realize it. See the crush door traveling up the up the conveyor belt. The visual goes to the crusher and then it comes down onto the table. So pretty cool stuff. I don't know how rich this door is, but you can see the heavy there. Now you guys find your gold in your Midlands or your or your number one port? Number one. Mainly number one? Mainly, yeah. Okay. A little bit on the, the, the right. two. So this would all be your number one port right yeah. there. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. This is your tailing. It's almost like a, a 50, 100 mesh sand. I can tell by the feel of it. Look at this, that's all your heaviest of your blacks, and your, your, your gold yeah. will be mixed in with that black sand. And that's just for nuggets and, and so on. But uh, it's pretty interesting. If you videotape here, John, you can see a line here of black sand, you can see a line here. You can see a lot of. Again, it's just really super heavy. Pretty cool. But these guys, they're getting it dialed in. Pretty fun. I've been I've been around shaker tables my whole life, but I haven't seen one quite like this. I've been around a lot of smaller ones, and, uh, and uh, maybe like one real hardcore professional one, but uh, it seems to be working okay. So this is kind of cool. He's got a nice water recirculation system here. Goes through multiple multiple stages and screens. The main sand dumps into the sand screw, and you can actually see the. Material pulling up the sand screw. Come over here, and it just dumps it out. Into the bucket. Yeah, I think everything's working pretty good, so that's nice. 
We just call it the number one cons. There you go. That's what I would call it. It's too. a top secret portion of the table we're not allowed to share right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I wouldn't either. It's kind of cool. So these going to do a quick speed, speed pan check. We got to get going. So we, we're going to just kind of look through it quickly see if we got any color in here. And this was what, a 240 pound sample you said? 290 pounds. 290 pounds? Yeah. And this isn't all the number ones, but it's a portion yeah, of it. So. a small portion of it. You know, hard rock's tough, man. People don't get it. It's not no. It's not for the light of heart. You have to, you have to, just getting your equipment dialed in is a challenge. Testing, Get, non-stop testing. Yep. And then finding the right kind of ground is always a challenge. You know, there's a lot of variables in there. Oh yeah, yeah look location. at all the, I can see a lot of colors. So like, you know, you might, you might have a good gold deposit, but can you get to it? Yeah, and can, can you, you separate legally, it? Can you legally get a plan yeah. of operations? You know, who, whose land is it? Yep. Yeah, okay. so that's not terrible. So what do you think on that? But look at that stuff. Let me zoom in. That is really some fine ass gold. There's one chunky right there. Yeah, but that is so fine. I can't even believe yeah. it. Look at that. So once I get all the number ones panned out, um, I'll get a number on it. It's, it's you deceiving. Say you figure you got about 80% here? Yeah, this is about 80% of it. So okay. that's uh So you're, you're pretty good about judging how quantity, how much yeah. you got out of that. Yeah. Now, this came from a top dump, so I didn't have to mine it. So okay. the work effort to get it is not as much as like, say you're underground, drill, blast, right. muck, cycle. So you could probably get away with a lower grade, but if this stuff's not half ounce or better, I'm, I'm not gonna go back. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> It's just not worth our time. It's not worth it, I get it. We just go to the next plot. That's not bad. No, that's I'm not, actually... I'm not, I'm not horrified. No, I wouldn't be horrified either. That's pretty good. But, you know, this is the reality of mining. You got to yeah. you got a sample test, sample test, sample, sample, sample. I People mean, honestly, with this, whatever's in the rest of it, if I ran a ton, this is only looking like 10th ounce. That's not looking favorable to me. Yeah. But I, I won't know until I get a weight. But, this but is I'll, I'll tell you, ounce. for me, it was fascinating seeing how you guys ran your operation. Oh yeah, and I'm also glad my crusher ran good. Because <laughs> I got because if we would have run this through our system, just the, the jaw and, and such a small sample, the loss in the system, you know, we wouldn't have gotten an accurate number. And we still have to classify off material that we can't run in the system. Right, we lose, I get that. We lose material in two places because of the communication issues. So right, we wouldn't even have gotten this number. So we're getting a more accurate number oh, for ourselves. That's that's amazing. Yeah. All right, guys. So we had a, we had an okay test. You said what, 290 pounds? So we ran it through the crusher, into the uh, onto the conveyor belt, and then we ran it onto the into the uh, what's that crusher? Student, uh, student Roth crusher, which then took our, took our, got rid of our little pancakes from the crusher. Crush it down to maybe it's like to me. What do you think about 100, 140 match somewhere in that ballpark? A little bit over, something oversized for the ballpark. Pretty small. They ran it across the shaker table. But they still got, how many more samples you got to test today? Uh, we're going to do one more, but we have a puppy in the stack right now. Oh, I should get out of here. You guys need to work. <laughs> you need the help. No, my back's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching. I see. That's what now the work starts. Mark's gone. <laughs> we got conveyors uh, for that. We used but, to do this by hand with buckets without conveyors. Yeah. Oh, you From each step. That, that just yeah. <laughs> totally sucks. I get that. Yeah. But uh, anyways, look. Mining is hard, mining is tough, and it takes, if you look, look around the, the shop here, he's got rock crushers, conveyor belts, shaker tables, multiple crushing devices, and it takes a lot to really put together a successful mining operation. And it takes a lot of testing. So these guys, they have, like I said, five more things they gotta test. So hopefully out of those five tests, and they got everything documented and you know marked down where they're from, and once they find a spot that's you know paying what do you say kind of your minimum you want to work for? Like uh, half ounce per I time? want a half ounce, ideally one to two ounce, but if we can find half ounce, then we can we can deal with that. Even at today's price, it still doesn't pay. Right. Because I gotta spend a day getting it up the hill. Yeah. Then I gotta run it through the system. Then I gotta clean the gold out. And then things break, gotta pay for fuel, oh, God, pay for groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well go fishing. I get two ounces. Yeah. Be yeah. positive. But, but it, it, it's all a lot of fun and it's a lot of work, but it takes a lot of patience. And you have to go through this this learning curve. You know, everybody does. I've gone through it. These guys are going through it. Um, I actually learned a lot today myself. I haven't really seen all this stuff tied, tied in together, so that was kind of cool. So uh, it's been a good experience. I hope you guys learned a little bit. And, 
and it's a constant learning process. I love the guys who go, yeah, I know what I'm doing, I know everything, and that's the guys that go, okay, have a nice day. You know, because I've been doing this, I'm 64 years old, I've been doing this stuff since I've been a kid, and every time I come out, I learn something new. So, um, you gotta have an open mind, and, and it takes a lot of patience, and a strong back. <laughs> Not this one or this weak mind. And a weak mind. Weak mind, yeah, maybe, too. <laughs> I, I, I'm good at the weak mind part. <laughs> Anyways, it was a lot of fun, guys, so. So, Mark, thank you for the tips. Thank you for the use of the machine. Thank you for your adjustments and, uh, and updates yeah. today. We're getting a finer grind than we've ever gotten. Okay, cool. It's working really smooth. I was really happy with the way the machine ran. And I didn't see, we were, you know, we coming in here, we, we were said we had some wobbles and some weird things, but I mean, she was running pretty true. I didn't really, once she speeded it up, yeah, that was, I think yeah. all the little caddy wampus vibrations, everything disappeared. It's just a matter of- And it got in sync. Yeah, and everything kind of it's fine, kind of a harmony to it, right? And kind of fine tuned and, and adjusting a few things. And just, yeah. All right, guys, it was fun, and uh, Thanks, keep Mark. in touch, man. Thank you, appreciate time. We'll end, Thank you, Mark. All again, hopefully yeah. sometime soon. But and I just want to say, Hollywood's in the house. Hollywood's in the house. And I want to see more gold next time. Come here. Come here. <laughs> so do we. <laughs>